I've been trying to go live on Instagram every day and I'm gonna go live right now and uh, chop it up with some of the people on here. Hey guys, I just did a video on Revelation chapter two where Jesus talking to the church in Ephesus. And uh, I was freshly moved upon by the fact that what he looks for from us is uh, love, that it is first priority to him. Uh, hey, hey guys, I see you guys on there. Blessings to you. Anybody have any uh, questions or thoughts concerning first love for Jesus? You know, I've heard it said many times that first love is Jesus is first. Uh, others have said it's first affection, first uh, priority. Um, I like all of the definitions I've ever heard of first love. One of them really touched me, uh, that the word first and love should be capitalized, which is really special because he is the first love. Alexander asks, how do we hear God? Uh, well, in my opinion, um, you just let him hold you. You just take time to just linger with him and stay attentive to him in your heart. This really helps open your ears and calm everything else down. Uh, this helps a lot hearing God. Uh, any other questions that anybody wants to shoot out there, I'd love to, to take a stab at them for you. But um, first love for Jesus has been just freshly burning on my heart. You know, all the things that Ephesus had in order, Jesus says, I, I have this against you. You've, you've left first love. Do you think revival will break out after this coronavirus outbreak? You know, I've, I've heard several different people say that, that there would be an outbreak of God after this. Um, you know, but with what we're talking about right now, first love and revival, I uh, was in the midst of the Brownsville revival and I remember hearing a definition from Vance Havner, and he said, revival is people falling in love with Jesus all over again. And so uh, I hope so. I hope there's a great mass of love going up to Jesus. Uh, blessings to you guys as well. I see you, Tashan. Hello there. Yeah, any thoughts on first love? How to overcome a cold heart? Great question. As a matter of fact, that's exactly what's going on in in Ephesus, um, the scripture says that they had left, left, not lost. It wasn't taken from them. They had a decision at one point in their time, in their life, where they valued something more than his presence. So Jesus says in this, he says, repent and do the deeds you did at first. So repentance we know is looking away from the world and self unto God. And Jesus uses this word repent as the way back to first love. So if we remove repentance, we remove the way back to first love. And so when we turn our eyes away from us and the things of the world, all the problems that are going on in your, in your life, all the lower things and turn them to Christ, this is how we receive a revelation of Jesus. As a matter of fact, to the church in Ephesus, uh, he starts off their whole letter with a revelation of himself, which shows me the number one first thing that's needed in Ephesus for them to be able to restore their first love is a revelation of Jesus. And they, they respond to this revelation of Jesus by repentance, looking back unto the Lord. Jesus also says, remember, how do you overcome a, whole, a cold heart? Jesus says, remember me. Remember my, my love for you, my faithfulness to you. Remember how I saved you. Remember how I was with you in the midst of the things that were going wrong, all the sweetness you found in me. This will always quicken a, a cold heart. Uh, do you believe that the mark of the beast is coming soon? You know, I haven't done a whole lot of study on uh, what the mark of the beast actually is. I've heard it all my life though, because <laughs> I was in the church. Um, I'm not sure, I really don't know. But I do know this, that sheep don't know what's coming. They don't know the way, nor are they concerned with it. Their only focus is where is the shepherd? And so for me, I feel hell itself can be expressed in this one question, where is he? And so knowing where he is, awareness of his presence, to me is more important 
than knowing what's coming or the sequence of events. Um, that's just me personally. I know there's, there's people that feel uh, called in their lives to understand these things. So this person says, um, from, from D ashes, <laughs> from D ashes, I'm seeking to have an encounter with Jesus for many years. He, he, he is not giving it, question mark. I encourage you that the encounter with Jesus is in the gospel. All you have to do is look at this gospel, let it penetrate your, your heart, let it penetrate your being, and you will find that the gospel itself is the reaching out of the hand of Christ and the manifestation of His love, and you will find dripping from the tree and His palms and His feet and His brow, the encounter that you need is the blood the blood, the blood of Jesus. Again and again, we return to the foot of the cross to see the wonder of His love and the majesty of His nature and humility. Yes, God bless you guys. Simplicity, yes, it's so important. Um, Emmanuel says, can you speak more about the book uh, Spiritual Torrent by Madame Guyon? I have not read Spiritual Torrent by Madame Guyon, but uh, I am reading her biography right now, and it is fantastic. One of the things I read in it last night that really touched me was she uh, ran into this woman before she was in a spiritual relationship with the Lord. And the woman said to her, you're seeking to do outwardly what can only be found inwardly. She had all kinds of, Madame Guyon had all kinds of religious rituals that she was doing. Um, she was getting involved in spiritual exercises externally, but had no inward reality of the presence of the Lord. And Madame Guyon was moved by the shining face of this woman and the tenderness in her voice. She said she could tell that the woman enjoyed the presence of God. And so when she heard the words that she was saying, it began something in her life to not seek without that which can only be found within, which is the sweetness of God's presence um, on the inside. So that really touched me. Um, here, we got another one. How do you deal with stepping down from church leadership? Uh, to me, I think... Now, again, I, I've never had to do this, so I can only speak from a very small perspective. But I would only say, make sure all your satisfaction, all your peace, and all your joy comes from the man, Christ Jesus, and your fellowship with Him. Because it will protect you from things that people do to you, or even loss of certain things, or even what you think to be your relevance or significance. If you find all in Him, no one can take anything from you because you have all in the man, Christ Jesus. I remember A.W. Tozer said, we have all in one, and that one cannot be taken from us. Yeah, so I just, that's the only way I can encourage you is just continually find all I need in Him, all you need in Him. Uh, yeah, this is her biography, Adriana, that's what I'm talking about. What important is soaking in devotional time? Okay, how important is soaking in devotional time? Um, I start every time that I'm with the Lord, I start by sitting down absolutely silent and just letting my heart go up to Him. And it must be lifted above all of the other things that try to grab a hold of it and pull it down. And uh, it must be lifted above the head because the heart must pass the head if it's gonna go up to God. A lot of times people's hearts get stuck hitting their heads. <laughs> but you gotta remove the brain out. Stop thinking about all kinds of things and issues and problems and what you want, what you don't have, all this stuff. And you have to let your heart go above all that and look upon His beauty and His love with your heart. And that heart-to-heart -heart love is the bullseye. That's the key, loving Him. Uh, somebody says here, how do you practice spiritual disciplines without striving? Um, for me, I find that my pursuit of God is not a matter of discipline as much as it is jealous desire. What I mean by that is, uh, best way I can describe it is when you want to spend time with your kids, but all kinds of things are getting in the way and your kids look at you on the phone and they're like, Daddy, I want you to come be with me you know, come be home with me. You have this burning desire to go be with your children and things that get in the way, no matter how important they are, you have a burning jealousy against them. You say, no, no, I will go be with my daughters, my children, because I love them and they want to be with me. That burning, it's not a discipline, it's a burning jealous desire. So I would say for me that uh, spiritual 
disciplines wouldn't necessarily be how I would define it. I would say it's jealous desire to be with the one who alone satisfies my soul. Um, hopefully that helps in some way. Can you pray for someone? Sure, yeah, I can pray for someone. What would you like me to pray for them? I have been having many dreams when Jesus visits me. Wow, I saw a quilt on a bed, an entire mosaic without, with thousands of pictures. Um, and the all made Jesus on the cross. And Oh, wow, so all the pictures made Jesus on the cross. That's beautiful because everything's found right there. Paul said, I desire to know nothing among men except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Crowned in grace is how to soak in God's presence. Um, again, I can only speak for me, but soaking in the presence of the Lord has to do with fixed attention and affection going up to Him. Um, I just hold attentive affection with no other agenda. The difficulty and spending time in stillness, or as you would say, soaking, or others would say, waiting on the Lord, or prayer, or communion with God. The, the, the difficulty in it is just not allowing things to take your attention from Him. But the good thing is that when you realize your attention has been taken, it's so simple, just turn right back and say, Oh Lord, how I need you. I need you to even want you. I need your help to even desire you to even be able to experience you. Um, the character of Christ, yes. Here we go, here we go. Uh, I love the fact that we don't have to add to him. He is enough. That is a wonderful point. Uh, is there not enough in him for all my necessities, as Charles Spurgeon said. So inspiring the way you talk about Jesus. Man, he really is, he really is beautiful, guys. One glimpse of him shifts everything. Everything is, is changed by just turning attention straight to Him. I find myself completely revolutionized from one minute to the next by simply setting my heart upon Him and giving Him His proper place as King and ruler and love in my life. Eric, how do I find in such a busy world to spend more time with Him? Amanda, um, I don't know your, your schedule and things. You kind of have to look at what you have going on in your life and then make some decisions based upon uh, how much time you have. But know this, whatever you can give to Him, He'll take it. <laughs> and whatever you give to Him, He will use it. And He will love you just as much if you spend 10 minutes with Him as if you spent 10 hours with Him. He will love you just the same. Uh, Eric, can I ask you a question? Yes, throw it in here. B Brett Spears, thank you for your post on humility and the coming of the Lord. So bless my wife. And thanks for saying that, especially coming from you, man. Blessings to you. Your soul must be slave to your spirit. That is a great point. The soul must be slave to the spirit, which means the soul is subjected to the dominion of the spirit. Uh, how do I seek and soak without falling asleep? You know, whenever I start getting sleepy, um, if I'm lingering with the Lord, I will stand up and pace back and forth for 10 minutes, praying in the spirit, singing in the spirit, just pacing back and forth, um, singing in the Holy Ghost. And then I find my blood gets uh, returned to me and I can sit back down again. Um, this is where I do it actually, right here. Um, yeah, this is so rich. Oh, thanks for saying that. How do you deal with spiritual pride in comparison with others? Remember that to compare yourself with others means you don't find all you need in Him. So the issue then becomes, are you everything to me? Are you not more to me than 10 sons, my Lord? Are you not more to me than a bigger church? Are you not more to me than miracles? Are you not more to me than all these things? That's the question. Am I not more to you than these things, he's saying. And uh, this will deal with comparison. But as far as spiritual, spiritual pride goes, all you have to do is look at the cross and see the humility of our God and see the humble nature of the one who left light unapproachable to be crucified, bleeding to death, naked on a tree. Compare your humility with that and say, oh Lord, how I need you to be more humble when people are uh, dealing with people or even uh, recognizing everything comes from you. I, don't, I can't even take credit for the graces that are given to me. 
They're all from you, Lord. Everything's been freely given by your grace and your mercy. How can a stone rise, Lord? I, I can't even rise myself. I don't even have life within myself. Jesus says, you have no life in yourselves. But if you would throw yourself at his mercy, he will quicken you and, and be all that you need. Eric, what is humility? Can you share on this? Um, so I have read many books on humility. I have studied humility in the scriptures. Humility seems to me to be God's favorite thing because it is the thing most like him. Even more than miracles, humility is like Jesus. So what I would say from my limited understanding of humility, and I feel I'm, I know far more about pride than I do humility, but I would say humility was best described by Andrew Murray. He said it is the dethronement, the dethronement of self and the enthronement of God. To me, that's the best definition of, of humility. Um, Tracy, in his mercy, he's removing the hindrances, keeping us from int intimacy. Yes, so true. It's his mercy that does these things. How would you fully break free from religion while still serving in ministry that has strong religious spirit? Um, I would encourage you, and now I'm not in your situation, and I don't have all the facts surrounding your situation. But what I can say is this. If the Spirit, my friend, dwells in you, no one can touch Him. No one can take Him from you. No one can stop Him from flowing out. No one can stop him from being love and patience and joy, no matter where you are. Even if you be in a prison for the rest of your life, the joy of the Spirit is untouched. Thomas Brooks said, if one drop of the joy of the Holy Spirit fell into hell, all its torments would be removed. <laughs> um, here's another one. I really need to hear this one. Praise God. Fixed attention and affection. Oh, this is so important. I can't tell you how this constantly saves my life. Just fixing my affection and attention on Him, just holding it there. I find the rivers of God flow into my heart. I find the love of God like liquid pour over my being. I find the value system of my brain affected. I find satisfaction and joy and peace beyond what I can express. And it causes holiness to be effortless. He is lovely and captivating. Yes. Remember him. Good, good word. The Holy Spirit once told me, pure love for the Lord is having complete access to sin, but not accessing it. <laughs> That's so good. He doesn't take away your ability to sin. He just blinds you to it. Yeah. That's so beautiful. Having access to anything else, but not accessing it. Stare at the lamb. That's it. Top four books to read, please. Uh, for me... Pursuit of God, Ador Pursuit of God by A. W. Tozer, Adoration by Martha Kilpatrick, Paul the People in the Spirit of God by Gordon Fee, and Humility by Andrew Murray. Now, that's probably four of four hundred. Oh, John Richards, he is dazzling. Yes, he is. He removes the your awareness and consciousness of your surroundings by his light beams and light rays. Just like John sees his face shining like the sun and he falls like a dead man. He, Jesus, by his beauty and glory, renders everything else powerless. The mind, the heart, the body. How does Christ become your all? I, in my opinion, Christ becomes all by giving up all to him. Christ can only be for us what we give to Him. This is very important because a lot of times He wants to fulfill us in an area, but He can't because we won't give it to Him. Um, so I think that's how Christ becomes your all. I think it was Corey Ten Boom who said, you cannot say Christ is all you have until, wait, you cannot say Christ is all you need until Christ is all you have. Pursue the Lord in His presence for personal revival. It's hard to not get frustrated in that environment. Ask Him to burn in you with a pure heart. Yes, because you want to know Him. Knowing Him is everything, guys. What if you don't feel Him in the secret place some days? Well, um, your consciousness of His presence is really contingent upon attention. 
uh, I have had many times where my attention is so spread thin and though I'm doing the same thing outwardly because my attention is divided, my awareness suffers. The experience of God for many people is so rare because scattered minds are so common. It's important that all attention is given on Him. I remember Thomas Merton said, the plague of the prayer closet is to be there yet not present. Yeah, Donna, powerful. He loved me when I was far from him. Yes, even in the depths of sin, he loves us. My first encounter with Jesus that changed my whole life was at Brownsville. Uh, Steve Hill preached the gospel and I responded to it and I was saved from sin. <laughs> and then I got, they prayed for me. When they laid hands on me, I was filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, this person says, I want to spend long hours in God's presence, but during the time, can I read a good Christian book? Man, you just follow the leading of the Spirit, you know? Um, can I, man, maybe I can show you something that I wrote down. I actually, oops. I actually had a dream the other night. I was in Reading in the dream, and a guy asked me how, he, how to experience the Lord. Now listen to this, I'll just read this to you. <clears throat> this is a dream I had. I was in Reading, a man kept asking me, do you have some time? I have some things I wanna ask you. Finally, I said, what is it? What do you wanna ask? He said, how do I pray and experience God? I want to experience his presence. And in the dream, I was frustrated. And I said, if I could, brother, I would grab you by your collar and I would throw you into your closet and I would lock the door from outside. And I would want you to stay in there as long as you possibly could. <laughs> You don't need anything but a Bible and breathing lungs, a Bible and a real desire for Him. Just worship Him, read the Word, worship again, read the Scriptures, pray unto Him, worship again, read, worship again. <laughs> then I said, soon you will begin to feel what is happening on the inside. What disrupts presence, what deepens presence is, or wait, what what deepens the presence or the sense of His presence is just holding the sweet sustaining of His presence through adoration. These three things, worship, the Word, and prayer, are the golden pipes through which the golden oil comes. There is nothing you need to do or to accomplish but to remain in the sweet sense of His presence. This is the bullseye, the sustaining, the beginning, and the end. I cannot know Him for you or teach you into knowing Him. You have to go to him and remain there. This is what I said to the guy. It's crazy how I could remember when I woke up all the things that I said to him. I know that was kind of long. Let me jump down here and get another question here. I'm sorry, I'm passing some of your questions. Um, which book by Martha Kilpatrick? Adoration. Uh, Ted, if that's your name, Ted Eaton, it will change your life. <laughs> I promise you. <laughs> It shows you that prayer is simply watching Jesus breathe. Crowned in grace, sometimes I feel so obsessed with Jesus. I just want to be with him all day long. Is this obsession from the Holy Spirit? Absolutely, absolutely. The Spirit sheds abroad the love of God in your heart. Uh, Michael Culliano says, Ernie, Ernie. Eric, could you say that again about having access to sin and not doing it? Oh, oh to sin and not doing it. Yeah, so the person had written earlier, uh, true freedom or true love for Jesus is having access to sin and yet not doing it because basically you're, you're more taken with Him. It's not about gripping your cross and gritting your teeth and trying your best not to do something that's wrong. It is about something so much higher than that. And it is the reception of life. It is receiving Christ as life that changes desires so that you're free from sin, not because you're sweating your way away from it, but because you have new desires in the new covenant because you receive new life from the person of Christ. That is holiness. Uh, my friend said my encounter was not Jesus. How can we know if it's Jesus? Oh, April, I don't know what you're talking about, but anything that causes you to love Jesus more and desire Him and submit to Him and His rulership through the Scriptures, it cannot be the devil. Eric, you recorded a song called Forever. You will be the lamb upon the throne. Where can I find it? That song is actually written by Jack Hayford. And it's, uh, 
Oh, man, I can't, I rem can't remember the name of it. But if you look up Jack Hayford, forever you will be the lamb upon the throne, it'll pop up. Can you talk on stillness? How do I quiet my mind and heart? So stillness is synonymous with singleness, single eye, single focus. When you fix your, your, your soul, your heart completely on just Him and hold it there, this is stillness. It is quieting your heart. It is uh, one thing. Yeah, it's, it, that's as simple as it gets. And you just hold it there. Um, I mean, it's, 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 it's just... Yeah, uh, new desires from the new life we received in Christ. Yes, that's it. All right, guys. Well, um, just as I started, I'll, I will end with this. It is love for Jesus, loving Jesus, love exchange with Jesus that he is looking for. And we can have everything else right, but if we miss it here, we have missed it. So I encourage you to give yourself completely over to love exchange with him. You say, Eric, but what am I doing? Just loving him. Well, what, what about the Bible? Well, find how to love him through the scriptures by seeing the text and letting that reveal to you how beautiful he is and then love that about him. Everything from beginning to end and sustained all the way through is a love exchange with Jesus. Yes, God bless you guys. Uh, I'm gonna try to go on live again tomorrow. Thank you again for all of you who are supporting us in this difficult time right now with everything being shut down. It really means a lot to us. Those of you, we get these donations in $5, $10, you know, every couple of days, it means so much to us because um, it helps us tremendously. God bless you guys.